Hey guys, in this lesson we are going to create uh, some authorization for our simple blog API uh, using a Laravel plugin called Sanctum. Um, if you pulled down this application or you created a Laravel application in 2022, you should already have Sanctum installed. Um, it comes by default. If not, there are instructions online. It's fairly simple. You'd run a composer command, publish Sanctum, and then also uh, run the migrations. But chances are you probably already have it installed and ready to go if you have a working application. So let's just dive into an example and then we'll see how to fix it. So right now what we have is a simple API that accepts some simple post data, title and body. And if we run a request for that, we should get back a positive result telling us that the post has been created. Uh, which we do and um, what we want to do is we don't want to allow just anybody to hit this endpoint and create data we at least want to get an email and a username um, so that we can track this this creation a little bit better and that's what sanctum is going to allow us to do so the first step that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to open up a terminal now the way that i normally do that is I am going to close this terminal just so that you uh, don't see it right now. Uh, so I have these uh, Docker containers. The application is called Blog API, and I know that this is the main application server. So I'm going to click on the open terminal function, and I'm going to use the command php artisan make controller and I'm going to put this in the API folder and I'm going to call this auth controller. I'm going to hit enter on this oh, and it doesn't know what the artisan command is because I misspelled it so artisan and then make controller Oops, one more mistake controller API folder and we are going to be good to go. This is gonna take it maybe a little bit of a second because I'm recording, but if I pop back over to our application, we should see within a few seconds over here, a auth controller show up. So I'm just gonna refresh this. And we do. So just so that you can find it and you know where it is, our new file should be an app, HTTP, controllers, API. I'm going to go ahead and open up this new file that we just created. And let me just get rid of the folder explorer for right now. And we'll just expand this out so that you can see the code. I'm going to go ahead and delete everything that is in off controller. And that is because I already have some sample code that I will include in the uh, GitHub that is in the description. So if you don't want to code along with me, um, you can just use the GitHub, uh, the GitHub link that is in the description. I'm going to minimize this function, this login user function, because we're actually not going to use that. So this is what the new file is going to look like uh, in the end. It's going to be the auth controller and it is going to have a function called create user. It is going to take in a request object. It's going to do some data validation. So we're accepting name, which we require, email, which we are requiring. And we're also making sure that it is in um, the uh, proper um, uh, format for emails and also that it is unique among um, name and users and emails. And then also we are going to accept a password. If the request pass, passes the validation, which is this chunk of code right here, we're going to create a user with the information sent to us. We're going to use the hash make uh, function to uh, encrypt the password so that it's not saved in plain text. And then this is probably the most important part of this. We're going to send back the inf we're going to send back um, some success information, and on the user model that was created in the code section above, we are going to call the create token function, and this create token function is going to be passed back to the user 
and is also going to be stored so that um, the user can use it later on to create posts. So, like I said, this link and the code is going to be in the description, so just pull it down from GitHub when you get a chance. Um, with the auth controller information in place, we need to pop over to our API folder and to our, our API routes uh, folder, I should say, and so that you know where that folder exists. If you're at the root of your application, it would be in the routes folder and it would be the file called API. I'm going to copy this above line, this code that is above the line, because that is the same place that our auth controller lives. And we are going to then add our auth controller. So that is now brought in. And we are going to create two more routes. And those routes are going to be just bear with me here, I'm copying some code over. And we're not, so we're going to create two new routes that are both posts. Uh, we're going to really be focusing on this first one up here. We're not really going to use the auth login function, but it is in the code, so you'll be able to use it. I'm going to hit save on this. And now we're going to use this first create user func uh, this create user route I should say to create a new um, user and get back our token so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy some of this code because we are going to create a new request in Postman to do that you would go to this little file over here and create new and then it should pop up and you'll want to use an HTTP request and we're going to change the verb to a post. We're going to paste in uh, the text for, that we have saved so far, uh, which is going to be localhost slash API. And then what we're going to want to do is we're going to copy essentially the code that exists or the route that exists right over here. So I'm going to copy this code right here for our route so that we're pointed in the right direction and get rid of this extra slash and we're going to click on the body we're going to click on form data and that's going to pop up a window that looks like this that takes a key and a value pair now to show you guys what we're doing i'm going to pop up over here to the auth controller and you'll see here that we're accepting data and that we are making sure that the data is in some you know correct format so the first thing that we're going to need to do is add the name parameter in our request and we're going to use a name and then we're going to create an email and I'm going to use something that I know doesn't exist already because I've done this quite a few times and then we're going to create a password and the password doesn't need to be too complex so if we send the request, we should get back a positive result of a token, but I think we're actually not going to get that because for some reason, yes, okay, we're getting this error that I've gotten in the past, and I don't exactly know why because I'm pretty sure I did everything right, but really what this error is telling us is that there is a column called expires at that doesn't exist in the personal access tokens table. Now I'm not really too sure why that exists or why that is happening because I'm pretty sure I installed everything correctly, but it has consistently happened to me every time I've tried this. So the next step that we're going to do is we're going to create a new migration file. We're going to say PHP artisan and we're going to say make migration make and then the colon migration and I'm going to call this update underscore personal underscore tokens I'm going to hit enter on this and it's going to take it a second but again that's because I'm recording okay now with that migration file created I'm going to copy this little bit of 
code. I'm going to hit Control Shift Find, and actually, you know what? Don't do it that way, uh, because we know where this these exist. We can just very quickly go to the root of our application. We can go to the database migrations, and we should see our update personal token file. I'm going to expand this and then we are going to add a little bit of code for our new uh, column. So we're going to, again I'm going to copy some code, sorry about the cheating, but time is of the essence. Alright, in the up function we are going to point our uh, schema table at the personal access tokens. We are going to add a nullable column called expires at, okay? And then we are going to go back over here to our terminal, which again, seems like it's hung. So I'm going to once again, open up a new terminal. Whoops, wrong thing. Actually, I think I did it right the first time. Okay. And now we're going to run our PHP artisan my grid and hit enter on that and it should run only the migration file that we need to create the new expires at column. Now with the expires at column added to our database uh, we can hit this request one more time and we can generate a fresh token based on the information that we send. This will just take it a second. So we have our new token. I'm going to copy this token. I'm going to come over here to uh, the um, to the post request. Now, one thing that I need to show you guys that I had messed up on earlier and um, forgot about, and it is actually the super important part of this whole thing, is that we need to protect this route with our newly added um, integration. So to do that, we are going to add a function onto the end of our API route. It's going to be the middleware, middleware function, and it's going to take one parameter, which is going to basically say what um, kind of sort of plugin we are going to use, which is going to be the auth sanctum plugin. Um, that's going to be the guard for this endpoint. Okay, so let's now with that code added, let's go back over to Postman one last time. I'll show you a negative result, which would be if we hit this create post, we should get a error saying that we're not authenticated. And we do message unauthenticated. And now we can do what we need to do to uh, make that work. So click on this authorization tab right here that will show up a window like this. And you'll click on bearer token in the drop down. So bearer token. I'm going to get rid of this old token in here because I'm not really sure if that actually is going to work. I'm going to paste in the current token and let's hit our request one last time. And as you can see, our request has now been accepted because we are authenticating with a value, uh, with a val uh, valid authorization token. So that's how you get Sanctum set up for your API. Uh, one last thing that I'm not going to show right now is how we can protect this route uh, so that it's, uh, I'm sorry, the registration route um, so that maybe like limited by users or something like that. But um, right now, at least, you have ability to create users uh, to protect your API with this uh, single line of code, this added line of code right here at the end. And, uh, you know, you're using the Sanctum plugin so that your API is at least uh, not completely exposed. So I hope this video was helpful, and thank you very much.